Saoirse. And I'm Kim. And we are doing an interview for... The Noosh Magazine. Actually, no, I'm, I'm interviewing Kim. You know why? Because it's undeniable. Her prolific career is undeniable. So being an artist oh, myself... Too. No, no, Fair. no, no. You know what I love the most? I love it's you. like, oh, <laughs> do you see now? She's going to like completely throw me off this. Can someone bring me water? <laughs> like I'm blushing. Kim, listen. I actually, when I was like, oh, uh, would you like to interview Kim? I was like, I didn't even take a moment to think if I was going to be working today, I would have called in sick or I would have come up with something, right? When I, as an artist, look at your career, you're younger than me by two years, right? Mm -hmm. I'm so inspired. No, I am. Like, I might even get emotional. Not a lot of people have the integrity to choose their work the way you do. So many of us are running to just book the job because we have bills to pay and there's a life to build. It goes without saying that to make those kinds of choices and sacrifices does not come easy. So the first question I want to ask you today is one, how do you choose the work you do? And two, what are the sacrifices that you make that people know nothing about? Because we see the product, we see you on these shows, we see you talking in an American. I literally watch your American accent like this, waiting for a South African sound to come out of your mouth and it doesn't happen. It, like I am completely convinced. Thank you. Like I'm like, <laughs> that's why I didn't want to talk to you before we rolled. This is why, because it's real for me. How do you choose your work and what sacrifices go with that? Okay, let me answer your questions before I dote on you. No, I don't dote on me. We're not here for that today. I think you choose my work because, um, you know, I think a lot of things come my way. I also audition for everything. Okay. I audition for everything and then I just see which one sits with me the best, which one resonates with me, which one is, is the most Kim and also which one is similar to something that I would also like to say. And then also something that maybe challenges me as well, mm. takes me out of my box and makes me feel uncomfortable. Um, yeah, I think those are those are the things. And I think I've got a, a really cool team. You know, I've got a cool South African team. I've got an awesome manager that also helps me and guides me mm. on the right path. So I'm not alone when I make decisions. Right. I have people that help me. They kind of know who I am. How did you choose those people? Because a lot of people think they have a team. Um, but that team's not looking at the bigger picture for the artist, you know? Again, it's about the bottom line. I think it's lucky. Um, and it's also years of building a relationship. Mm. You know, I've got a manager, he's called Roddy Quinn, and we've been together for a long time, you know? Um, yeah, and I think it's just a joint understanding of kind of where we must go. And I think we've, we've gone certain ways, and sometimes you go the wrong way, and sometimes you go the right way, but then we just, we just um, redirect ourselves. But it's exciting. Right. It's exciting to be able to work in this country, um, in the States, I've just recently landed um, a UK agent. Amazing. So then that can also be an opportunity for myself to see if I can get into that market. Because like you were saying, we're working actors. You know? Right. You just want to work. So when you say that you, you audition for a lot of work, right? Is it mostly South African or international? You keep a balance. How do you approach that? All of it. Um, yeah, I get, I get auditions coming my way a lot of times, so I just do self tapes. Okay. Or if I'm in the country, if I'm in the states, I go in and I do, you know, one on one auditions. And now with the UK being open to me, that's open to me too. But the same here as well. Okay. So a lot of people to get work in the US, they relocate and they throw everything into going and living there and making home there. Why haven't you done that? You did it at a, at a point, right? Right, yeah. And then you also realize that I can, I make a lot of my, my work here. Mm. You know, I make a lot of um, television here and TV shows here. The same with, like, I can do it in the States. I did it in Canada. And now the, with, with the UK, with the UK being open to me, I'm doing it there as well. I think, um, yeah, this, this industry is fleeting. Mm. So you kind of like go with the flow mm. and you see what works best for you. Uh, yeah. 
That's yeah. what I kind of do it. I go where the work is. Right. You asked me a question before the camera rolled. You said to me, like, did you choose this? Did you choose acting? And I did explained. You, did you choose acting? Because well, I remember you from backstage. <laughs> but what I also do remember you from was when I used to do Take Five. Yes. And I was doing the road show. Yes. It was at Nazareth. Yes. And, was yes. At and I was a dancer. And you were a fantastic <laughs> dancer. And all of the boys <laughs> that I was working with, obviously, oh my gosh. Team, oh. <laughs> they all, they all it was a body money. thing. It was a body thing. You know, dancers come with this body. So it was a body yeah. thing. Did you choose to be in this you industry? You're fantastic. You're fantastic. Okay. Did and you then, choose? How did you, how did you get into acting? <laughs> well, but it chose me. I mean, so if you were telling the story, somebody. Yes. Me, they were like, you have to do this audition, Lorsha. Yes. You're a dancer. They were looking for a dancer who they could possibly train at to the act. Same time, yeah. Working really hard. Yes. Dancing and then is a difficult profession. I got onto backstage, and that's where I learned to act. How did you learn to act? No, I'm still with your story. No, I'm with your story. I'm really with your story. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did my first film when I was 12. Uh, was I read old. that. So it was an internet. How did that film. happen? It was an article in the August. What? It was like a little, small little Audition. article. Audition. Auditions, yeah. What? For a girl that can act and swim. What? So you're a good swimmer? So I could swim. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I auditioned for so that. So what kind of color school did you go to? I mean, I could just swim. We doggy paddled. So I would never have made that audition at that we point. We used to swim at UWC, at the swimming club there. Okay. Where in Cape Town are you from? I'm from Bella. Bella. You're down the road yeah, from me. From. Blue Downs. Huh? Actually, I do know that. I know you're from Blue Downs. That's crazy. I know you're from Blue Downs. So you used to swim. How did you get to, you used to go from school to UWC to swim? Yeah. Oh, UWC is like a walking distance from my house. Okay. But there was another friend of mine that was also part of it. Okay. Swimming. So what school, high school did you go to? Ballot High School. Wow. So that's cut, Ballard, cut, cut. I... Listen, that is like in the cut. In the whole cut. That's like what you see on American movies when they say it's in the cut. Ballot High is in the cut. Kim! What do you mean in the cut? No, I love Ballot. No, I, you know what? What makes me proud to even know this kind of information is because not many people understand what it takes to not be a statistic as a colored. You know what? Um, I think we were also, I, mean, I was intensely supported and there were lots of things for us to do, you know? You would go to the library, you would walk everywhere. I went to swimming, I went to squash practice, I went to, you know, so you would involve yourself right. in, in all of these different sports codes. And that's how I kind of kept busy when I was a kid. Okay. You, know, you, went, you would walk to the basketball court, your friends would play basketball. You know? No, I didn't know that. Intense <laughs> I didn't it's have like, that. She had that because she had you UWC. Do? I just went to dancing. Well, That's see? what I did. That's what I did. But now tell me, so this audition was in the newspaper. Then your mom took you to this audition. My daddy actually took me. Oh. So I um, went to the audition and then we had to swim. And the one that kind of won the swimming race. Yes, you won we, the race. Went on Are to you win. competitive? For sure. Yeah. For sure, I am. Yeah. So then you won the swimming race. Yes, you went. Yeah, I won the swimming race, and then whoever won in those different heats yes. would go on to do the acting audition. Okay. And then eventually it was down to like forty girls, and um, yeah. And then I. Wow. I That's how I got backstage. It's I exactly know. the same story. Tell me your story. No, no, I don't have to. It's exactly the same setup. They made us all dance and they culled us as we were dancing and the best of the dancers remained. And then they're like, here's a script. Go outside, learn this, come back and do it. And I auditioned with Gray Hoffmeyer as my opposite. No idea who Gray was. I was just like in this old guy and I just do this. I need to go. I'm late for my rehearsal. That's how I was in the audition. And he came in and he was like about to gesture to kiss. And I was like, also, yeah, okay, let's kiss. And, he, and they were like, have you done this before? I'm like, no, but he was, I mean, you said I must improv. So I, I'm here and, and I need to go. And he made you feel comfortable and you were very comfortable in your skin and you had a, you had a fun audition. I, I think auditions ever fun? No, because they make you question your value. I mean, so when you go into auditions, right? How much of mind conditioning do you need to do to be able to give your best kind of delivery? Like, how do you prep? Uh, I prep a lot. I love auditions. 
Do you? Mm. I've learned to love auditions. Even self tapes. I love them. I yes. used to love them. Send me notes on how to do good self tapes. I cannot stand them. I'm just like, why? Oh, we're in South Africa. If it's a South African producer, why am I doing my own self tape? I understand you have an international career. You must send no, self tapes. I audition, I audition for South African things too. But I don't know the self tape thing for local. I'm just like, guys, just call me to an audition. I don't know what you want. Because then also when we get to set, can I direct myself? No, because I'm not objective. I don't know what you're looking for. I think doing a self tape gives you an opportunity to read the text. Yeah. To interpret the text best that you can. Yeah. Um, it gives a director or producer an opportunity to see if you can understand text. Oh wait, pause. For those who don't know what a self tape is, a self tape is like basically you set up the camera, you stand and you audition with someone who's off camera and then you send the tape in and then they, that's how they kind of color down for you to come in for a second callback. So it's like auditioning but by yourself. I feel conscious really, I think I'm gonna be honest, okay? Like I feel hella conscious. I don't know how I'm a performer because I do, I get like inhibitions and oh, it's rubbish. So please, please think you're a lot better than what you think you are. Oh, you look at you. So I think a self tape is um, an opportunity for you to uh, look at the text, interpret it best the way that you can. It also gives the director and the producers an opportunity to see if you can understand text. Right. So if you see it that way, you know, that's brilliant advice. I'll take that. Growing up, you have siblings? Yeah, I have siblings. I know your sister's in Dubai because I follow you, so I know about your niece mm. who's all over Instagram and is very cute. She is. Yes. Your sister moved to Dubai. Mm. Yeah, do you have any other siblings? Yeah, I've got one that's um, also abroad and then I've got a brother who's here. And yeah, we are four, we four kids. Four kids, so one boy. One boy. Okay. Only two of us are in the industry and the other two are not in the industry. Okay. And growing up, where are you? In the middle, at the end, I baby? Am, I'm the second uh, youngest. Second youngest. So, so who's the baby? Three. I'm not, Jody. Jody's the younger one. than you. Wow. Okay. So growing up in a family dynamic in Bala, what did you think was the most challenging about your childhood? Nothing. I had a great childhood. Did you? Yeah. I mean, I think because of, of um, the way that I am and maybe I had my head in the clouds a little bit. Mm. So I think I was just floating through life. That's awesome. I don't hear many people say that. Yeah. We don't hear many people say that. If someone asked me that question, I was going to take up files, like pages long. We were going to sit here until tomorrow unpacking this. But there is therapy for that, so I wouldn't have done it maybe on this platform, right? <laughs> So at 12 years old, you got this role. I want to go back to that. Then the role after that was Take Five. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you did Take Five? Mm, I was my, in my late teens. I'd, I finished school. So before that, I was doing a kiddie show yeah. on ETV. Okay. At Long Street Studios. Where yes. You guys the what was the kiddie show? Called Crazy. Crazy yes. on ETV. Yes. So that's when you were on backstage, right? I, I, there was like maybe 2001, 2002, was someone, okay. yeah, somewhere there, yeah. Okay, no, then I got take five and then you started backstage. Yes, so. maybe on, on take five, yes, yeah. yeah. So I was in Johannesburg and then I, I remember I even, I think I auditioned for backstage. It was probably one of the best shows to be part of at that time. At that time, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it if, was you were, if you were young and, and yeah. And Tony and you. Yeah. And, yeah, it was different. It was a, a one of its kind at the time, yeah. It was. Mm. Um, and then and Tony. The, oh, yeah. yeah. And then from there? And then from the, uh, yeah, then from the, I auditioned for Isidingo and then got Isidingo. And she was Lolly. Everyone knows you as Lolly. How long were you on Isidingo for? Oh, so many years, so many years. Like how many is so many? <laughs> <laughs> on your fingers, like, <laughs> like how many fingers? Like uh, five years? No, 12. 12 years? Yeah. I wasn't. I'm you don't look old enough to have been on a show for 12 years and have the biog that you do. No, I remember we were, I was on it and then while I was on it, I was doing other things as well. So right. I, uh, yeah, we would, you know how it is when you act, you kind of like do a lot of different jobs, you know? So I was yeah. doing theater okay, while I was so doing Sedingo. Okay. Well and, That's awesome. Yeah. And then I got to go to the States while I was doing Sedingo, then came back. So you at this point in your career, second season of Raker. Raker won for me, there were moments I had to pause and walk away just because I think there were moments that you took me and I had to like go, whoa, 
you're not in the story, you're observing the story and I had to go have my little moment and then come back and watch it to be able to continue. There were moments when you were with Angus that I was just like, holy crap, how is this happening, right? So the psychology behind the relationship between you and him, like the way you portrayed that, I. It took me completely. I want to understand from your perspective, how did you prepare for that and how did you debrief from that? Because a lot of the time, especially with roles we do in our country, a lot of the prep gets done, you know, either just before the job and predominantly by the performer, and then they get to set, and then it, then it's a, this, you know, this combination of people who contribute to this product, and then the debriefing sometimes doesn't happen, right? You go to your own therapist and you debrief. We're responsible like that a lot of the time. I'd like to know with Reka, what was your like preparation for it, and then your debriefing for it? Mm. I think with um, with Reka, they kind of gave us an opportunity to immerse ourselves, you know, in in the show. We have like we shoot the first season we shot for plus minus five months. Wow! And then the second one was a little bit over three months, I think. Yeah. And so I think you just completely immerse yourself in the in the material, and for that time, yeah, just thinking about that, right? You know, and I think that for me is the only way that I'm able to do it, and. Uh, we were given extensive character bibles on the show um, in terms of who the character was and their backstory. So what was your prep for it, like personally, with, with all of that information? Like how did you go, well, these are the choices I'd like to make? Hmm. Um, I think we, we are open to talk to the, the writer and our producers. So I just think it's a constant dialogue. Mm. That is, for me, the only way that I do it. And then once the show's over, I don't know, I just cut myself off. You just cut off? Yeah, I have Like, to. You, you don't need to sit yeah, to someone. Yeah, it's obviously sad. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to miss the show. That, yes. I'm going to miss the people. You always miss the intensity of the work. I know, right. it's, it's a high. Mm. You get addicted to that, like, I'm going to get that, I'm going to do it, I'm going to hit the mark and I'm going to go. And, and you kind of keep doing that every day and you keep setting that bar. And then it's like, you don't want one good scene. You want an entire catalog of great scenes, right? And at the end of it, it, it is, you're like, it, there's a dip where you're like, oh, it's done, like, wh what now? So you didn't debrief from that with someone, you debriefed yourself. Hmm. I mean, we did, we did season one and you give you everything and then, and then you're done. I'm not that kind of an actor, like I don't really get like, into I do the work and then I, then I finish. That's so responsible. So how do you do that? So if someone's out there, they're young, they're an actor, they want to know how I they know. do that. I don't know. You've never thought of it. Uh -uh. So you just like kind of, they go cut, it's the last day, it's a wrap, thank you so much everyone, blah, blah, blah. You walk out the door, you're done with it. You, you said, obviously, but yeah. everybody goes on to the next thing. But for me, the way that I counter that is by giving my everything when I'm in it. Yes. So when it's done, I you am are depleted. Done. Yeah. You are done. I'm done. That's awesome. I think that's actually I gave a cool, everything. That's a I cool can... life lesson. When you're not... in something, yeah. give it everything you've got so that when you're out of it, there's nothing left to give. That's mm. brilliant. I love that. I, lo I love, love, love that. I know that you have to run. I could talk to you the whole day. Um, Reka 2. What do we need to do? How's it different, firstly, from the first season? Um, and then secondly, what do you hope to, to, for the show to do? Um, I think it's very different to the first season because the first season was set in the cane fields of Kozilina Town. Yes, KZN. She was on the hunt for a serial killer. Um, you were also introduced to her and her past and mm. um, how Spielman really controls her. Right. With the second season, the last time we met her, she had just captured Spielman. Mm. Um, so when the second season starts, she's in a brand new environment. She's got a brand new precinct. You get to meet brand new characters. Amazing. Um, and I think while the first one was set in the cane fields, this one is set at the harbour. She's at the Durban Harbour Police. Yeah. So, so you're based in KZN to, to, to do this, this second season as well? Yeah. So KZN, okay. I think, is another character in the show. It's yes. so incredibly beautiful. Right. Really, it's really beautiful. To show. What do you hope the show does, like, for people watching? I don't know. I mean, I hope, I know there's a lot of shows to choose from. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just hope that they love it as much as they loved the first one. And I hope it's a... Um, 
I hope they're satisfied. I hope they're satisfied with what we, what, mm. we, what we put together, you know? And for you personally, what do you hope that your work does to people and for people? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just react. <laughs> That's so cool. I like, I just want to act. I love that. Like, okay, last question. Yeah. What's your favorite food? Uh, anything like seafood, crepe. Okay. Favorite travel destination? Uh... I mean, the places that I haven't been. So I think my favorite travel destination at the moment, I really want to go to Iceland. Me too. I would like to go. Yes. To Me too. Mm. Yes. For the, but there's like, um, in parts of Iceland, there's like a volcanoes happening at the moment mm. that to evacuate some people. Oh. Yeah. Then, okay, last question. I keep saying last question, mm. right? But I mean this, cars. What's your favorite car? Like if you oh. had to choose a dream car, what would that car be? I do like a Bucky. Oh my like god. A Chevy. A Chevy. <laughs> Go Chevy. Yeah, like a flat Chevy. That's like, that's what I like. That's what you like? Yeah. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to tell anyone out there that they don't know about you? Mm-hmm. No. Just young that, I, that I adore you. Oh, stop <laughs> it. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> then for young artists out there, anything you'd want to say to them coming into this career, how to navigate it, what are smarter choices to make, mistakes that you've made that they could learn from? Um, I think that, you know, in Afrikaans, they call it an ana or a vin, like mm. something that keeps going. Persistency. Will, yeah. Mm. Will be successful. To persevere. Mm. So just keep going. Like, don't stop. Don't be discouraged easily. You know? So I find a lot of young people out there are making compromises, right? To be able to just get that break. What would you say about that? And I'm talking about self-compromise. I think um, you just kind of have to be like water, you know? You kind of have to go with the flow. It's a fun industry, so mm. just try and... Yeah. Go with the flow. Yeah, just try and, yeah, try and enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> What's next for you? After yeah, Reka? It's Reka, then a trip to London, and then I'm going to go and see my... To meet sister. your new agent. Yeah, so I've already gone and met them, yeah. but I'll yeah, yeah, okay. go and my, my new agent. And then you go see your sister yeah. in Dubai. Yeah. Okay, next year. five years, what are your plans? I don't know, hopefully to keep working. To keep working 10 years? Just work. <laughs> Kim Zalebra, that's what I learned today. What's my takeaway from this? I've got to persevere, got to get over myself for self tapes and actually look at it differently. Never and thirdly, so hard yourself. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy yeah. it. Actually, I'll take that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sometimes stuff in life's just really simple. Like, it doesn't have to be so complex. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, go, you got a flight to catch. Go. Thanks. We're excusing Kim. I mean, we could stay here for a week, but she has to go because, you know, it's a global artist, ladies and gentlemen, Kim Engelbrecht. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're amazing.